I think one of the big things uh, that a lot of people in the education space have been saying over the past years is, is that the disruption in education has not been at the same pace as in the business world. We've seen Uber and Airbnb and Bitcoin and a lot of fintech and other disruptions, I mean, just in the entertainment space, Netflix and whatever. So the real world has adapted to the dis disruptions fairly quickly and the education space has not been that disrupted. And then came along COVID-19 and suddenly we are the most disrupted that we've ever been. And I think it's time for us to, to really adapt to the space. We didn't really have a choice. We don't really have a choice. So, so yeah, we're going to be talking about that uh, this afternoon just to frame it a little bit in the activities of the Center for Technology. Most of you that have joined us before would know that uh, FETSA started off with the uh, digital citizenship campaign and the Center for Technology over the past few years already. And uh, over the past two, three years, we've been having a slogan to try and is explain what we want to do, and that is uh, to learn as we live. Our learning space should mirror our living space. In saying that, we want to adapt to this, to this generation that we live in, this environment that we live in, and get the better and the more productive and the more efficient delivery of all services, even in education. So learning as we live has been, has been our slogan for a while. Uh, and this year, we put the focus on govern as you live. So, the school governing body, uh, the activiteiten van die beheerlichaam, beheer en bestuur soos ons leef. Dit wat jy gebruik in jou bezigheid. Uh, kom ons bring die self te denk en naar die school toe. So, in saying that, uh, our focus point for this year is the introduction of the thought process and the thinking cap and, and just the inclination of one of the chief officers in business into the workings of the school and the school governing body. And we uh, framed it in, in saying that we want to govern as we, as we live, the introduction of the CIO in the school management space. Now the CIO is the chief information officer, also sometimes referred to as the chief innovation officer or the chief integration officer. So there are many eyes going around uh, but the chief information officer is very, very important in business at this point in time. We've got data flowing, we've got information going, we've got privacy, we've got security issues, and today we'll touch on some security issues. But it's more so a people um, process than a product or technology process. And I'm very glad to say that our speaker today, Shal, will be touching on some of that. So yes, the, the Center for Technology wants to imprint some thinking of a design, a solution, a process in a school, rather than just saying we bought a really nice product and the product must now do something. So um, I'm not going to use too much time in that uh, and I'm going to allow our speaker uh, to introduce himself and, and maybe say a little bit more of his business, but we're going to be looking at the rapid onboarding of Microsoft Teams, which is really doing great at this point in time. Microsoft uh, early out uh, very early days of the COVID-19 pandemic announcements, uh, Microsoft announced that all of their products are free. Uh, well, it's been free to schools over a long period of time already, but they introduced some more free stuff for a limited period and some for a longer period. And Charles is going to tell us more about that. And then we're going to focus heavily on a big question about internet security, safeguarding our learners that's spending more time online. Charles, welcome. And uh, bye, thank you that you on vandaag. Uh, join in, in some of those care. I'm going to ask you to ask yourself, and maybe a little bit more to say about IVS. Uh, let us know a little bit about who you are and what you are doing, and then can you tell us a little bit about what you are doing and what you are doing and what you are doing. So please go ahead, make yourself at home, and uh, yeah, let us know about what you can share and how our member schools can benefit from the service that you guys, you guys give. And there's a FETSAS member only special. Uh, offer on the table today as well. So, so please take note. We've um, we have been in collaboration with Shaw for the last few weeks and, and just uh, designed a solution that's specific for schools. And, and we're glad to say that we're bringing a, a FETSAS member only special offer deal to our members. Shaw, over to you. Uh, welcome and, and yeah, share a little bit about yourself so that we know who you are and then, and then jump into it. Who's AVS? Uh, thank you, Rian. Thank you, Paul. Uh, thank you uh, for the uh, for the pleasure of talking to all the members and so on. So let's hope um, we can uh, we can certainly share share some value. And because uh, we're in quite an interesting time of our lives, I think our great grandparents probably when they went through the Second World War and so on, they probably had some similarities in terms of 
how disruptive it was. I mean, we literally uh, at war uh, with a virus. And uh, so it's very, very uncommon times. And we will probably talk about it when we are getting a bit older even uh, in terms of, you know, remember the COVID-19 days, remember when we did that, remember we couldn't have smokes, we couldn't get any, any additional whiskey or whatever the case may be. <clears throat> but, um, but you hear these stories. So we will look back at history and, and, and talk about it and what we learned from it and, and, how, we, and how it changed. Uh, I think a lot of things in the world as well. There's certainly, everyone talks about new change and there's new world or whatever. But the point is, there are certain things that are forced on us. And hence, this discussion today is probably driven from the fact that there were certain changes uh, that are required uh, in terms of it. So let me, uh, Paul, are you going to just share my screen again? Must I do it from my side, right? Share my screen. Okay, fine. Uh, let me go over there and share it can you see that yeah very good all right so the the the, the program that we brought on board uh, was bring your own school so seeing that you the, the the learners can't be at the school and you can't be at the school we thought well, like how do we bring the school to you uh, and that was sort of where the whole initiation came from in it world we usually talk about bring your own device so people will bring their own laptops and their own phones to the offices and things like that. And there was a need to con sort of control those devices because they could potentially compromise your environment. So that's sort of where the bring your own came from. So we th thought up about bring your own school, bring your AS school, um, your AS to. And maybe just a bit about AVS for those of you who don't know us. So it's pronounced AVS, the E is silent, AVS, cybersecurity. We've been around for a couple of years, 21 years now. We have over 500 clients in Southern Africa. Um, there's quite a number of uh, partner industry recognitions that we've had uh, over the years. So we, uh, we've earned our stripes uh, over the years and we 100% South African, so very much based here in South Africa. Um, certainly doing some business into, into Africa itself, but uh, Africa is in our blood. Um, that's, uh, I could almost put the South African flag here. We are very, very truly South African. Just a couple of brands, maybe you guys have seen some of these. I wouldn't bore you with, I mean, from an education point of view in terms of technologies, but you may have seen some of these technologies over a period of time. You would have, everyone knows Microsoft. Some of you may have heard about FortiGate, Fortinets, and then some endpoint protection products as well, uh, or antivirus, as we would call them. So we'll touch on to a few of these brands today. Then I think firstly it was, how do we think? What, what is our thinking? What is our methodology? So I think from a school point of view, you've got a very specific methodology in terms of how you create people to change habits, how you get learners to, uh, to gain new skills. For us, it's uh, in the technology world, it's no different. So. We, we do an assessment uh, when we interact with clients. We do an assessment. We then move over onto a plan. And then for the first time, when we look, look at remediation, that's sort of like when we start implementing certain technologies that will help you. Because it's no use just jumping in there and this person says that and that guy says that and just buying technology and implementing technology. What's quite critical is that your, your, your objectives that you want to achieve as a school and that the kind of technology you implement needs to be closely aligned. It's not about the technology. The technology is just the facilitation process in order to make things happen. And then we go over onto the training and awareness. And, and why that's important is that, that whatever technology, you can implement technology, but if people don't know how to work it, if people don't understand it, if they don't understand um, where does it fit into the overall plan, you lose half of your investment or the value of your investment. So the training and awareness is also very critical. And then over onto the monitoring and the incident response. So the monitoring component is, we've got quite a nice uh, security operations center, a cyber security operations center, where we monitor uh, a lot of our clients. And the idea there also is to check, to cross check that whatever money you've invested, that you're getting, the, you're getting value for your buck that you're getting a, a return on the kind of investment that you've made from a technology point of view. So you need to monitor, cross monitor it. Otherwise, you can implement technology and tomorrow someone else comes around and you then buy that technology, but you never take it back 
you ask yourself the question, why did you put it in, in the first place? There must be a very good reason for it. So that's where the monitoring component comes in as well. And then incident response. <clears throat> so one thing I can probably safely say is that every one of us will be compromised at some stage. Um, they say there's two types of people, those that have been compromised and those that don't know that they've been compromised. So it is, uh, everyone will be compromised in some sort of way. It is just the extent of the compromise which one has control over. So um, we can't total, totally isolate ourselves and not be affected by the virus, for instance, by the, uh, vi the COVID currently virus at the moment. But we can take a lot of precaution. And when we do get it, take the right kind of actions in terms of uh, responding to, to that situation. So it's very much the same. And I think then one thing that Rian mentioned was it's, again, it's not about technology. What's quite important is that you need to bring the people component, the processes and the organization culture or the school culture. You need to bring these things together in order to create a very lean environment when it comes to the kind of technology that you implement because technology obviously is a fundamental part in terms of school delivery as we stand right now. And I can see it also going forward it opens up huge new opportunities for the schools, which uh, never were present. So, so that's the beauty uh, of this. If I was to take something positive out of COVID, that's probably the one beauty, is that there will be certain technologies that we can use going forward. It will change the way and the efficiency and effectiveness in terms of how we do education going forward. Um, us not being educators, we obviously did some research uh, in terms of education and, uh, you know, ask a few questions, school skills and learning. What are some of the typical problems that uh, people are experiencing? And these are some of the things that we came across. I think that disconnect between educators and learners. You know, when, when, when the kids are at school, there's a physical connection, there's a psychological connection. Those things are now being separated. So, so that, that creates a lot of uncertainty because you're totally out of your comfort zone in terms of how, how schooling is being done. You feel like you're not in control anymore. And further on, the, obviously learners now have much more autonomy. They play probably games till 12 o'clock or 2 o'clock at night and wake up at 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock or whatever the case may be. Uh, and educators may, may feel that they're losing control and losing that direct control over the scholars uh, in, in the traditional way of schooling that they used to have. I think uh, the, the, the children that actually went through homeschooling has already gone through a lot of that. So that autonomy balance, that balance with the education, the edu educators and the parents and the kids and so on has probably been balanced now over time. But that's where that's the kind of, uh, the kind of change that we are going through. A lot of the less privileged kids, definitely a poor internet connectivity. And that's not just in South Africa. It's a global problem. Uh, Europe probably in a bit less, but even in the, in, in the States, United States, people are in the poorer areas battling with connectivity. And um, if, they, uh, um, uh, if they have connectivity, they probably spend it or they are on Facebook or Instagram or something that they would spend on education. But internet connectivity is an issue. And then the part where it all, it's all about in terms of where we are standing right now is how do we provide education from a distance perspective. And our chat obviously is gonna be a lot about the technology and the digital platforms, because there are so many choices out there, uh, there are so many options. So what is gonna be the right kind of option for, for a school? And we're gonna, I'm gonna to touch on that in terms of one of the value propositions that we can offer. I think the content and the curriculum uh, readiness, there's, uh, it's not that every school suddenly had all this curriculum with a, which they can just upload onto a platform and it was available and, 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 and learners could immediately start interacting with it. So the kind of content and curriculum that needs to be communicated, is, I also picked up was a bit of a challenge. And then obviously homeschooling, not by choice. No, homeschooling, not by choice, not for the kids and neither for the, for the, for the parents. None of them uh, uh, opted in for that but they are forced into that situation. And I think, how do we, uh, from a schooling perspective, try and facilitate both the, 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 the parents uh, as well as the, the, the learners in terms of uh, handing home schooling. So it is not the, the, the parent's choice whether certain work that is being given by the teacher 
via Teams or whatever the case may be, is important or not important. Um, they can't actually make that choice. It really needs to be driven through. So I think there's also a bit of education from a, from a, a, a parent perspective. And then obviously the challenge about um, examination. Can I quickly come in there? Charles, oh, sorry, I just, I just wanted to give some feedback that's, that's uh, just relevant at my kids' own school and some other schools that we've been talking about. Uh, just talking about the data and th th there were three phases of, of, the, of the surprise. The one is data and at some schools the data access run up to 90% people have access. The second one was the access to devices. So the house might have data, but there's maybe one or two computers and the parents are working from home. So there's a separate layer or a different layer of challenge. And then the third one, which is the homeschooling, not by choice, that just triggered the thought. We've got a lot of parents, probably 40% of parents um, reporting that they don't have the, either the time capacity or the curriculum knowledge capacity to be the teacher. Uh, you know, so that we think that data is the biggest issue, but it boils down to data devices and um, you know multiple learners in a house two three kids in a house that that can't access the same computer at the same time and then the parents ability to be the homeschool facilitator uh at that is at the highest level of of the frustration that's the highest marker just just as the homeschool the homeschool readiness was not there just as a little input on that but sorry for interrupting you but that that's definitely an issue and most schools will be reporting that that the parents have that frustration yeah, no, most definitely. Now, even with people that I spoke to that were doing homeschooling, they actually resonated the same principle in terms of typically what uh, they experienced uh, in terms of, and, and it was interesting, I didn't think curriculum would be a big issue, but that came out uh, as, a, as a big thing. Um, and then obviously the, the seamless uh, internal communication. So what we're about to present to you um, will really facilitate a process where your internal communication could be next level. Uh, and that sounds very sells like sort of talk and tech, techie talk and so on, but it's not. Uh, we found in our own organization that our internal communication in the organization actually increased by at least probably 40, 50%. And it's not that we don't talk to each other, but it was just so easy to start communicate, communicating with each other in any kind of way. And whether it was the computer or whether it was just your mobile device, it all works on the, 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 the core technology, the core platform, works on any kind of device. So uh, any smart device uh, will, be, will, be, will be relevant. So yeah, I think that, that bridging that technology gap and the digital platform gap, uh, I mean, there are so many options. I mean, some are on Google, some are on Adobe, some are on uh, many types. And then obviously what's fit for purpose. I think the core for us when we looked at all these things because we partnered to multiple vendors but we looked at what, what can create a connected community and a team. That's the one thing. What is relatively simple, if they, I mean, in education, it's not that we want to go for this very high tech stuff. We want to use something that is easy to use. It obviously needs to be cost effective because we certainly didn't budget for a whole lot of extra technology uh, in our normal budgets and the pressures on, on revenue streams coming into the schools. Uh, as it stands, is, is also under pressure. So it needs to be something that's very cost effective. It needs to be deployed quite rapidly because I think we're five, six weeks down the line now, and there are still schools which are um, firing on four cylinders instead of eight, for that matter. Not everyone is firing on on all the cylinders to have things smooth and 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 communicated. So it needs to be deployed quite easily, and that was quite important. So it's not that you must have a lot of high-tech internal guys that can manage it or your even so your own service provider paying a lot of extra hours just to get it working it needs to be easy and deployed easily as well and then obviously also the long-term benefits so it really facilitates digital transformation and a fancy word but i mean really it is for, it, it is using technology for us to be more efficient and smarter and 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 thinking out of the box in terms of how we present it. So the fact that we had this way of presenting education, this certainly facilitates a process for us to totally rethink how we handle education uh, in the future and how we can even reach kids. Uh, if someone is sick uh, at home going forward, if someone is, uh, if there's 10 kids sick, there's no reason for them to lose out on that day's education 
if certain things were recorded or certain curriculums was made available. There's no excuse that I wasn't at school, I was sick. You could get access to it. I mean, so think about those kind of benefits moving forward. And then I think critical, uh, everyone is aware of the cyber, cyber crime issue, cyber safety. So it must be a core ingredient to ensure that you, you are cyber safe, both you uh, and the children. And we'll touch a bit onto that just now. Because just on the cyber safety side, um, cyber criminals actually use these very large events. I mean, like the Olympics, like the World Cup and so on. But we've seen it even more now with COVID. A lot of reading, a lot of going onto the internet because people now spend a lot of time in front of their computers. So there's an enormous amount of cyber crime increases due to, due to COVID because of the amount of information. So, so uh, um, uh, what's it, covidvirus.com, it belongs to a cyber criminal website. So you think, okay, let me type in cyber, uh, COVID, COVID virus or whatever.com. You will actually be landing on it with a lot of good information, a lot of good content, but in the process, they are trying to download some information on your computer without you even knowing that. So that certainly is, is happening right now. <clears throat> then what is the value offer um, that we put forward to, to, to FETSAS or in collaboration with FETSAS is, is Microsoft Teams. And why Microsoft Teams? Because Microsoft is very passionate about education. I mean, you've probably seen some press with Will Gates Foundation and things like that, where he's also doing a lot of sponsorship. So Microsoft has, have provided a license structure for education uh, and they call it A1 uh, with, and it's got a whole lot of features, but one of the features is called Microsoft Teams. So for those of you who haven't heard that, so what we will help you with uh, in the process, and this is by the way, is the, the implementation of this, is for free for the next six months for all FEDSAS members. And that is, um, we'll obtain all the license keys. We will literally be creating what we call a tenant. Now, a tenant is, is like your domain. So we'll provide, we'll provision the platform, the data center, cloud data center platform on your behalf. We'll then add those licenses depending on how many teachers there are. If they're 50 or 70, we'll provide those 70 licenses in that core platform. Will then enable that, that, that service also to existing Office 365 tenants, which means if you were using it, we will then facilitate the activation of the Teams function within your Office 365. We'll also be setting up new Office 365 tenants as it is required. Uh, and then also create the user creation for cloud services. So there's certain cloud services which, are, which can be linked into your Teams uh, team sessions as well. We then also do the base student creation and upload. So we would literally all, we teach one of you how to upload all your students per class because that's quite important to put them into the right class so that the right curriculum can be communicated to the right kids in the right kind of way. So, so we take the, you, you would take the list or you take the list and we upload them into the right kind of groups. So it can literally be a plug and play. So there's all your students loaded and you can start communicating from there. Uh, we said, yeah, we'll create up to 30 team sites. Now, a team site could be a grade 12A, grade 12B, grade 12C. So it could, in most cases, it will include all your classes or all your grades uh, within your schooling system. And we'll create them their own classroom in Microsoft Teams. And I'll show you a bit of a picture of that just now. And then also, obviously, assign the students and the staff to the right, to the right groups. So uh, a teacher could be associated to a, a team within the grade 12s, but will also be assigned to the teacher's team. So there's multiple teams in terms of where we can associate you into, and we'll do that. We'll do a basic user, uh, uh, a basic user training uh, also for, for, your, for whoever is handling your, your IT on site or, uh, or yourselves, uh, or we can manage it for you as well. But there will be an interactive session with staff on the basics of working at Microsoft Teams. So it's important that we educate the teachers in terms of, or the educators, how to work with this new technology. It's almost like getting this new car and taking you through all the features and explaining every single little button. And there's not a lot of buttons to press, luckily. And we'll show you the different uh, buttons that you can press in order to present your education and, and have it available in the simplest possible way. 
because that's important. Again, there's the people component. You don't do this interactive session, people will not use the technology to its full capacity because they just don't know how to use it. And then also um, a one hour basic setup for password, uh, password management of students. So this is to ensure that we don't get all sorts of rogue, uh, rogue children into your classrooms. We limit it and we almost control it so that the relevant kids are associated and only them can be associated to that class. So there's a bit of uh, security setup that we, that we do there. And then uh, the training, I also mentioned the, the training to the staff. And then if in case you were running an environment where your Microsoft was sitting on uh, at the data center of the school and you want to migrate that into a cloud platform into like Office 365, we will then facilitate that. But how we, that's a costed option. So we will literally make contact with you, do a bit of a scoping and then do a migration of the data that sits at, at the school, uh, data school, uh, that is the school data center or server and move it into the cloud. But that will be a separate discussion. And you will see just now how we go about and what you can do if you wanted to activate something like that. The next point is uh, Kaspersky for Office 365. So I mentioned the amount of risk that is associated these days with emails. 92% of all cyber criminals will use social engineering. In other words, they will use mails. They will use emails, uh, sending you very legit mails, sending you mails from people that they have compromised that, uh, and it could be a, a co-worker where you receive a mail from with a certain attachment. And well, yes, you know that co-worker, so everything should be fine, but it's not because your co-worker may have been compromised, you would get a mail and you will click on that link and then you get compromised again. So it's almost like that handshake story. And uh, it's, it's important that we almost quarantine your mails and quarantine all communication coming into, the, into your Office 365 cloud environment and making sure that it's super safe. So literally doing the hand sanitation, going through the booth, doing all sorts of things, prior to that communication and data uh, getting into the uh, into into your classroom for that matter so this sanitation and this license is quite amazing it's also for free for the six for the next six months provided by kaspersky <clears throat> we're, we're very fortunate in that we are the the only partner in country that has access to this uh, to this feature in terms of providing it's uh, free uh, for for fetsas and fetsas members so that's the, the email component, the cleaning and so on. And I'll explain, show you a bit of a picture just now. And then <clears throat> ESET is also an endpoint secure, just like Kaspersky and SOFAS and so on. So we will also provide you free antivirus managed out of the cloud. So it's not something, a server that we implement on site. It will also be a cloud server, just like Office 365. And we will fully uh, manage your endpoint security for you to make sure there are no viruses on those machines and that um, if you go onto the internet and you plug in a USB that they are all safe and clean. Everyone knows antivirus but this is this is really next generation endpoint uh, endpoint advanced uh, security which we uh, and again yeah if you want to manage it yourself we can also give you access into the platform and you'll also have full visibility of the dashboard which I'm about to show you. So this is the look and feel uh, of Microsoft Teams. So if you would open it up in your screen, it's a bit blurry here, but I mean, there's a whole lot of different buttons and you, you just open up a little block at the bottom and you drop that document into, the, into everyone's hands through Teams. So it's got a very intuitive, very, very simplified way. People that use Teams within half an hour, um, you would know how to navigate this as if you were a pro. So it, it, it is not complex. If you can open up emails and drive emails and do Word and, uh, and so on, this is going to be absolutely a walk in the park for you. And, and I must emphasize, Teams is actually going to be the core glue how Microsoft is going forward into the future by bringing all the different kind of technologies together into one platform. And Teams will be one of those, those core ingredients in terms of how they bring it together. So the quicker you learn, um, the better. Uh, because you are going to use it, whether you use it at another platform for uh, school or not, but you will definitely be, uh, be, be getting exposed to this. What I mentioned about uh, Kaspersky Security for Office 365, 
this is literally what we do. So it, it uh, takes out all the anti-phishing. So anyone trying to fish you, the anti-spam, all the spams out, any any attachments onto mail that has been that's got code coding, uh, any anti-malware, any anti-virus viruses and so on. But what I can maybe mention here is that on average at the moment there's about four to five viruses, new viruses created every second of the day. So that's the extent of the problem that, that we are sitting with. So it's permutations and variations of, of the same kind of uh, cyber virus. I must actually probably call it with COVID. I can't call it a virus. It's, it's a cyber virus. And it's real viruses. But um, uh, cyber viruses, uh, four to five new permutations every second of the day that's being created. In terms of the ESET platform, this is typically just for from a techie point of view, this is just how the dashboard looks, but we will manage that whole environment for you. So if there's any of your uh, any of your educators that we pick up certain things are not good, we will actually uh, be in contact with you and actually say, we've got a problem, you need to do a quick full scan. So you literally out of our 24 by seven SOC will be fully managed from an endpoint security point of view, uh, out of ESET or, or any of the other technologies. So if you if you do have current technologies, chat to us. I mean, if you've got something that's already working and you're not sure whether that's optimi optimized in terms of its protection, whether the kind of layers of protection that you have in place, either from a firewalling point of view or from an antivirus point of view or so, more, also more than welcome to, to chat to us. You can, you can just link into the, Connect page um, on the on the on the on the on the next slide. So this is literally you can jot down this uh, this URL. So this is the landing page where you can go to, and you can go and fill your name, your Fetzas member, uh, type in your email number for the school if you don't know it. Um, just hear from the school administrators and so on, and uh, specify what your specific interest is. If you want to make use of the full package, which is the Microsoft Teams, as well as the Kaspersky for 365, as well as the ESET, if you only want one part of the feature, more than happy, um, you, you can talk to us. And, and how the process will work is there's, we, it will be a high level 30 minute assessment. So when you fill in this form, um, there will literally be a, a 30 minute uh, assessment where we would make a telephonic conversation with you, co contact you and just find out exactly how the environment looks. Maybe we need to do a remote login, maybe. We'll, we'll, we'll see how what is required. We then quickly compile a solution for you. These things are pre-packaged. So it's just a matter of um, activating and understanding what your requirements are in terms of your environment. We set up a, a small agreement that's also from a poppy point of view and a protection point of view. And then we implement, train and monitor. So um, we will then do the rollout, do the implementation, uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier uh, in, in, in these steps here. So we'll literally then go through that program, but you would know exactly where you stand with the implementation process. So it's not like, okay, what's gonna happen now? There'll be a very clear communication plan in terms of how we're going to execute it. That everyone is on the same page because it's critical to have everyone's fingerprints uh, on the plan uh, and understand where it's, uh, where it's all going. And then uh, a special a special feature for um, for all the FedSAS members would be uh, go, and this is post the promotional uh, promotional period. So once we've done once you've you've made use of this offer, past that is like okay, what are the costs then? So uh, so for licensing, we've got a discounted structure for FedSAS members only, uh, which we uh, which we charge, and that's about a fifteen percent on any of these licenses. On the 40 gate side, on the firewalls, we're, uh, we've uh, got a 25% uh, discount. And then on consulting and managed services, so where you want us to maybe take over some of your, your, your school's environment and manage it on your behalf, there's also a bit of a 20% discount on that. Uh, I know cash is critical. And if we can have better value at a lower cost, why not? So, I mean, take these prices, you're more than happy to compare it with any of your current service providers uh, that you use and, uh, and then make your best decision from there. And then governance services, uh, which we also offer. So what I just want to, one, one point that I missed, and it was here, 
when we when you take for instance this option in terms of uh, uh, putting in the ESET component we will also provide an IT security policy so it's no use uh, putting a whole lot of technology in but we don't understand the context and the need to use certain features within that uh, endpoint security. So a lot of people say, oh, this is the best antivirus. I've been using it for years. Oh, don't use that antivirus because it makes my machine slow. Whatever the case may be, one needs to understand if, uh, if an antivirus is not implemented properly, uh, it certainly is going to make the machine slow. In many cases, people actually have two antiviruses. They bought the machine with say, something like McAfee, and then they also implement Kaspersky, and then they wonder why the machine is slow. It's not Kaspersky, it's not McAfee. It's like because both are running on the same machine. So a lot of cases, these things actually are just being misconfigured. So we will also provide you with a governance policy. If you, uh, uh, if you don't have a governance policy, you know what? It depends on whose opinion counts most in terms of what you implement, because everyone just sort of comes from their own angle and their own perspective and their own opinion. And we almost, we don't sing from the same hymn sheet. We, we don't use a common platform in terms of how you want to go about. And that's the only way how you can create efficient and lean uh, IT is, is, is to, to, to sort of use a couple of policies, not high level, very simple. We'll provide that to you. Um, policies to say, guys, I think these are the minimum things that we have to comply to. Our risk appetite is a bit higher because we deal with kids in a specific area or something like that. We want stricter policy, a stricter policy in place. No problem. If you say you want that stricter policy, make sure that those policies are then deployed on your technology you're using. It's no use having a policy and you haven't activated those features in your in your technology that you're using. So it's a combination of the balance, pragmatic balance between your policies and the technology. Uh, that you are using. So this is only available uh, to FEDSA's members. So that's it. That's, uh, that's it from me, uh, Rion, Paul. Well done. Thank you, Shaul. Um, yeah, bye-bye, Donkey. Thanks so much. We, we have over 240 views on Facebook currently, and there's some, some comments and questions on that side as well. Uh, and then we, we had a few good questions come in. Charles, you can probably keep your video on because I'm going to direct some of those questions to you. We're running slightly short of time. Uh, guys, I, I really think that this is an extensive um, presentation in understanding more about a process, uh, policy, and people rather than the product. So there's four Ps that I just funnily mentioned there. But um, I think this is very important to besef ons kijk na a oplossing en ons het architectuur nodig. We need architecture, not just the finished building. And this, this is where uh, AVS and, and their solution comes into play. So it's, it's kind of changing our thinking around the whole environment and the process and, and, and how it fits in. So I'm very, very stoked about uh, the thinking, rather framing it into to the mindset of a CIO, someone thinking wider. Uh, it's it's not just putting a classroom down in the cloud. Uh, policy and structure is very important. So, some of the questions were related to costs subsequent to the to the promotion um, time. Uh, I think Shaul dealt with that in a little bit, but I, I just want to comment that I think it's very much an individual schools basis. So it's a per user license. So we can't publish a, a costing now. Um, and, and I want to urge you guys to engage with AVS on that uh, FETSA sign up form so that we can get those questions answered for your individual context. Uh, there's no one size fits all solution. We've been saying it from day one uh, in that sense. And then there's the one of ongoing support. Shaul, just maybe touch on that too. Help on Mensa. Um, Op the internet, what fair is in this time. Uh, we do with um, ongoing support, uh, uh, training, and that kind of thing. Um, I'm Afrikaans Engels. Yeah, you can go in Afrikaans. Yeah, yeah. Also, I understand from our side of the country, from our side, we have in any case a whole span, and we have also here the operations center from where we can monitor. So. Ik denk wat belangrijk is, is dat de mensen niet eerst die gezels moeten hebben met die individuele mensen. Niet om te verstaan hoe werk hulle omgeving. Want de Engelse woord different strokes for different folks. Zoals so niet verstaan, wat, en, en dan moet dan moet en hij de en hij bespreken gaan als gezels over wat is de pijnpunten. Zoals so hij nou een stokje gehad het en zei, joh, als ik hier kon wegvat en hier kon werk, 
ons, ons moet daai verstaan, want dit is die pijnpunten wat ons moet wegvat, want dit is hoe ons die waarde kan toevoegse. Ons kan jullie ondersteunen in die lange termijn. Ons het, ons het baie klinkte wat ons ondersteunen. En ons doen dit alles op een op remote basis. So, dit is ons vir die school hoef te wees nie, ons kan het alles van ons sak af hanteer. Maar ons, ons gaan met julle gesels, en ons kan met julle gesels, soos jy nou met julle gesels oor, uh, oor, oor Teams of oor uh, Zoom. Baie dankie. Ja, yeah, uh, I think the other questions we, we've dealt with in a uh, uh, quite a while uh, throughout, you know, as as you spoke, um, some of the questions were answered, and I know Brad is taking care of a care, care of a few questions there. So, um, the bottom line is, you can support schools remotely from anywhere you are. You've got a strong capacity, uh, and let me just for for all our viewers, a SOC is a uh, security operations center, am I right? <laughs> so, uh, jargon, but uh, security operations center, and I think we all need to just frame our minds with we we are living with a reality of a physical world and a virus and sanitation, but those issues are actually a day-to-day issue in the um, IT world. And, and we're working with learners' information. We're working with learners online. So I think it's something to really take, take cognizance of. We're going to end the session um, on the FETSAS Tech website. So fetsastech.org.za. Uh, we've got uh, a few links, uh, companies, and uh, AVS is featured there on the companies page. But there's a few good blocks. Uh, if you go to the blog section there, you will see that uh, Shaul was on SABC 1 or SABC 3 not too long ago, just before the, the shutdown started about internet security and bring your own school. So there's a, a television interview and then some explanation on, on how the process runs out. So we want to thank you for your time today. I hope we've, we've touched on most things. Uh, Sorry for, for jumping into a, a very short s- section of Afrikaans here and there, but um, yeah, please uh, communicate with us in your uh, preferred language. We, we, we don't have the luxury of, of doing all these um, tech talks in, in both languages, but we, we might just swing over to that at some point in time uh, if the need arises. But thank you for joining us today. Uh, I'm going to leave it over to Paul Rankin to just close the session for us. Uh, um, Paul, the session is recorded. It will be on Facebook for quite a while, but most people will receive the session. I had many requests for, for copies of the session. Uh, but thank you for your help. Um, Donkey Shaul, thanks so much, Shaul, and thanks so much, Bradley, for, for hosting in the background. Yep. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for your attendance. Just to confirm, yeah, we will sort out the recording, send it through to you together with the PAC presentation so you can get the information. Um, and that should be through to you uh, probably by the middle of tomorrow sometime, if not a little bit earlier. Um, thank you, everybody, for your involvement today. It's been great. I think it's really a great offering, something to look into. Um, and, yeah, have a good afternoon. Ta-ra.